So you've tested your room for room resonances and you've decided to get yourself a good condenser microphone. In this video, I'm taking a look at these two from Audio-Technica. This one is the AT2020, which is currently retailing at just £74. And this one is the AT2035, and this retails at the moment at 153 Both of these microphones have a cardioid polar pattern. That means they pick up from the front, reject from the sides a little bit, and reject from the back even more. Both of them are really solidly constructed, and they have quite a strong mesh grill there. They actually look very, very similar. The um, 2035 has a slightly longer little spout at the bottom there for the, for the lead, but um, they look pretty close to each other, don't they? Both of these microphones are quite weighty, and you've got to watch that if you're going to use these on any kind of stand, because um, the weight really does pull the stand forwards. If you get one of those cheap ones, um, the chances of an accident are pretty high. Believe me, I've had a few. Uh, you've always got to make sure that the foot, the leg, is pointing towards your target, because if you don't, the stand will topple. Both of these microphones have a full frequency response. That is, they go from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Just to give you an idea, 20 hertz is that sound where you, you can almost feel it, the rumbling sounds, and 20 kilohertz is five kilohertz above where I can hear to. I only hear up to about 15 kilohertz, so it goes beyond my hearing. The AT2020 has a sensitivity figure of minus 37, and this one minus 33. What that actually means is this one is going to be slightly louder and, than this one. Having said that, this one has an output impedance of 100 ohms and this one 120. So this gives out slightly less than this one. So this one is more sensitive but gives out slightly less. This is less sensitive, sensitive and gives out a little bit more. But in actual fact, this one is a little bit louder than this one. So the AT2035 is just a fraction louder than the 2020 in practice. They also have different noise figures. The AT2020 is quoted at minus 74 and the 2035 at minus 82. Now that's a very good figure for this one. What that means is that this one is going to be slightly noisier than this one. Both of these use phantom power. Um, both work on 48 volts with the exception of this one, which will work between 11 and 52 volts. Now, for most people, that might not be too, too worrisome. You wouldn't worry about that. But if you're using a preamp like I am at the moment, which works on batteries, I can down the voltage on mine to 24 volts. And so I can send 24 volts to this one, which means my batteries on my preamp are going to last longer. The AT2020 has a dynamic range of 124 dB and this one 136 dB. To be honest, in practice, that doesn't make an awful lot of difference your voice if it's going to capture your voice that doesn't really matter when it would matter is if you're going to take this thing to somewhere where it's going to be really loud like a rock concert or an airplane or something um, this one is less likely to distort than this one but um, for most people that doesn't matter too much the AT2035 has a high pass filter which will take out rumble in recordings if you've got rumble going on around you and it also has a minus 10 db pad which brings down the sensitivity so if you are recording a loud sound um, you can bring it down having said that they are recessed in the body so you can't access them very easily without a pen or something to pull them across in one way that's a good thing because you can't do it accidentally but in another way if you're out and about and you haven't got a pen in your pocket you're stuffed you can't do it now so far this video has been recorded on a Rode NT1. They are fantastically quiet. So here is the noise floor from the Rode. And this is the noise floor from the Audio-Technica 2020. But to do this, I'm going to put it down. This is the noise floor from the AT2035, and again, I'm gonna put it down. Now, what I've done is I've put this microphone onto a handheld mount so that I can get it closer to me to give you an, a better idea of the actual sound of this microphone. This is the Audio-Technica AT2035. 
2020 and I'm using it at uh, the, probably the ideal distance for this microphone and the reason being I am in an untreated room and these microphones can be lethal at picking up reverberation. Um, just using the NT1, which is probably a much better microphone, I think, but having it further away, it may have sounded worse than this now. I don't know, I haven't checked yet. But um, this is the sound of the Audio-Technica 2020 at um, what I would say is possibly about the ideal distance to be using the microphone. To be honest, if I'm using these microphones, I would always try to get them very close because of their sensitivity and um, the way that they pick up the room can be quite laser-like. So this is the sound of the microphone used at close quarters and hopefully um, you're getting a good idea of what it sounds like. Now, as I go round, I'm just turning the thing round and I'm going to its side. Now, I'm on the side at the same distance and uh, you will have heard that the sound has now hopefully reduced a bit. So you can see that it rejects sound from the side and when I go to the back, not only does it reject sound, it may have slightly changed character. Now there are two reasons, it, it will probably change character from the back because the pickup from the back, it will pick up less treble. But the other problem is also it's possibly picking up reflections from the, um, the wall and um, that's being mixed into it as well, which is why I'm a bit, um, bit uh, it's a bit difficult doing these tests. Coming back round to the side nice and slowly, and I'm now back round to the front. So this is the Rode AT2020, and listening to it, you probably think, well, you know, that sounds pretty good, and this microphone is only £74, so I think it's actually a very, very good buy. This is the sound of the Audio-Technica 2035. Now, out of the two, I prefer this one myself in terms of sound, but to get this kind of sound, you pay quite a lot more. So this is the sound of the 2035, again, roughly about the, yeah, about the ideal distance. I would have noticed as well, of course, the output from this is higher than the AT2020, so I've had to just slightly lower my preamp. And the sound from this is possibly a little bit um, a little bit more top end, just a little bit more. So that's the sound of the AT2035 from the front. And as I go around to the side, um, I'm going to go around to the now, now I'm round at about 90 degrees to the capsule. And uh, at that uh, distance, same distance, that's you should hear now that the sound has tailed away. And if I go around to the back, and bear in mind I'm indoors. And the thing is, this is picking up walls and stuff from the other side. This is the microphone being spoken into from the rear. And um, I always like to hear the rear of a microphone because um, what they tend to do is they pick up less treble. And that sound, if it's reflected from walls, can be mixed in with the front sound. And it can affect the overall sound sometimes, depending on how loud your voice is and how close it is. And we're back to the front again. Try to do it nice and carefully so you don't get too many bangs. But this is the sound of the Audio-Technica 2035. So just as a recap, here is the sound from the AT2020. Here is the sound from the AT2035. Here is the sound from the Rode NT1. The sound from the Audio-Technicas um, is, I would say, slightly warmer than the Rode NT1A. The 2035, the more expensive Audio-Technica, is a little bit closer to the Rode NT1, which is slightly warmer, I think, than the NT1A. So they're quite close, um, with the NT1A being the one with the most top end. With these kinds of microphones, noise becomes very important because the most likely situation that you're going to be using these in is in a quiet room. Like I am at the moment, I'm in a very quiet room with uh, clocks ticking and this microphone is probably picking it up as well. So the noise figures can be important if you intend to use it in a very quiet room. So in that respect, I would say the 2035 is a bit better than the 2020 because the 2020 noise floor is slightly higher and you might be aware of, a, of, a, of an underlying hiss, although it's easily taken out. Um, having said that, it's not that bad, but um, at 74, it's getting a bit low. But sometimes I use these kinds of microphones outdoors, especially if we're sitting outside in the garden and I want a really nice clean audio, which is detailed. And I'd sit one of these on say a table outside and we'd all be in front of it talking while I'm filming. And in that case, I wouldn't take out the AT2035 or any, or the Rhodes. I like the Rhodes too much. 
This one is a little bit more expensive, so I wouldn't risk it in the weather and the wind, but I would take the AT2020 because outside the noise floor isn't anything like as obvious. You wouldn't hear anything, really wouldn't hear anything. The ambience will knock it out. So this one is very useful for that actually. And I also have some cheaper alternatives that I'll take outside and just throw them in a bag. But um, this is still a very useful mic. And it's certainly if you're on a budget, I think it's a really good buy at £74 and would get you started into uh, really good audio. The Audio-Technicas sound really good. Both of them have really a really good timbre. I like the sound of both of these. They are nice and sort of warm and detailed. And uh, I think especially the 2020 is a terrific buy. But if you can afford it, this one is even better, the 2035. I hope you found this video interesting and I hope you also got something from it if you're considering buying a studio microphone. If you do like the video, please press the like button and I hope to see you next time for my next video. Cheers for now.